The San Diego State Aztecs are set to travel to Rice Eccles Stadium this Saturday for what should be a fun opportunity for the Utes to avenge last season's loss. But what do the Aztecs like to do offensively and defensively? We're breaking down the X's and O's on today's Locked On Utes. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms. My name is JT Wistersill, and today's episode of Locked On Utes is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. On today's show, we're going to be talking about what this Aztecs team is going to be trying to come into Rice Eccles Stadium and do. We're all going to break it down from the offensive side of the ball, the defensive side of the ball for the Utes. And finally, we'll look at, at our bet online best big game bets of the week. Did that last week as well. So we'll see if we can help you guys win a little bit of money this coming Saturday. But as I mentioned, started off by talking about Utah's offense versus San Diego State's defense. And this is a San Diego State defense that they're going to play multiple fronts. They're Most of the time they'll be in, it's going to look like they'll start with three defensive linemen, but then they have another guy who's going to walk down and always be the defensive end that'll normally be to the right side. So it's pretty much a forefront most of the time. Sometimes they'll, they will bring five guys down in passing situations. They'll bring two linebackers in there. Sometimes they will just rush with three, and sometimes three maybe even stay there. But for the most time, it's going to be those three true defensive linemen and then the fourth one who's kind of like a defensive end linebacker hybrid that they trust to walk down and he'll walk over where Braden Daniels would be playing at the left tackle. So that's what you'll see mostly there in terms of coverage. For the most part, you're going to see a lot of zone for this team. They, they do a little bit, man. I mean, every team is going to mix it up a little bit, right? But primarily you're going to see this team in zone, which is something I think that Utah can really take advantage of. But before we dive into how Utah can take advantage of the zone coverage, I really want to talk about this, the multiple fronts that this San Diego state team does, because this is where the Utes have the biggest advantage to me this Utah team will be able to run the ball on the Aztecs. I think when you talk about this Utah team and their zone blocking and what they like to do up front, the stretch blocking as well, we know they like a little bit of power and counter blocking too, but this team's running game is going to be able to get going versus the Aztecs. We saw Arizona run the ball on them effectively, and obviously Utah has a very strong offensive line. If Utah can run the ball on Florida's defensive line, the Aztecs do not have any 400-pound defensive tackles like the Gators did out there. So I have a lot of faith in this Utah rushing attack and feel like they're going to be able to get it done up front. I just look at across the board. I think the double teams are going to be something this team is really going to work. And it's something this Utah team on the season, their double teams in those zone blocking, whether it's zone right or zone left. And how you use zone blocking usually works. So let's say it's if it's zone right a lot of the times, as Utah will do it, it'll be the tackle and the right tackle and the right guard working together. Sometimes the tight end might get involved, but the way that I've seen Utah do it so far, it's the right tackle, right guard. So that means it'll be Satawa Laumea working together with on that right side. It's going to be Michael Mokafisi. And then at center, you have Paul Miley. He's going to be working with left guard Keaton Bills. So they're going to be working up to the second level. And then a lot of times what you have is Braden Daniels on the left side. He's working with Dalton Kincaid or Brant Keithy trying to reach that second level. And what they're trying to do is take the defensive lineman in front of them, double team and work together. And then wherever that linebacker up top or safety, whoever comes down, whatever side they choose, then that player would go, let's say that Dalton is on the left and Brain Daniels is on the right side of the defensive end, and they're working together driving back. Then whatever way that linebacker would decide to try to get around them, that's the player who would come off, and then let's say if he came to the right, so Braden would come off and take the linebacker, and Dalton would be responsible for the defensive end. So that's kind of how the zone blocking works for this Utah team. So I expect them to have a lot of success running the ball, it's something that teams have been able to do so far on the Aztecs this year, and Utah is one of the premier rushing teams in college football. They're going to be able to get it done there. Now, Going over to that zone coverage, as I mentioned, There's, we've talked about it all week, right? Are, is this the game the wide receivers are finally going to break out? And to be honest, I don't think it is going to be this week. And I, I do think they could break out against it, but just because it's such a, it's a zone-heavy team, I think Kim, Kim Kincaid and Keithy are both going to feast in this one. I think when you look at the first game, it was Brent Keithy going off. When you look at the second game, it was Dalton Kincaid. 
I think both these guys are going to have outstanding games against this Aztecs team. Those are two guys who really understand the nuances of zone coverage. They understand finding those soft spots, how to settle down in them. And we know they're huge targets for Cam that he trusts that have reliable hands. I expect him to go to those guys a lot. That doesn't mean those other receivers aren't going to contribute. I do expect Salmanitas to have at least a catch this week. I think Devon Vele could go for his high with this Utah team, and maybe he catches three, four balls his high in the season as it pertains to that. Money Parks will get involved a little bit as well, maybe even see some Jalen Dixon. But I think it's really going to be tight end focused. And I do think Cam's going to have a good game through the air. I think he's going to have four touchdown passes, and I think two of those will go to – Two of those will maybe go to, let's say, Dalton Kincaid, one of those to Brant Keithy, and then another one to a receiver. Maybe it's a Money Parks or Devon Bailey, of course. So one of those guys is going to get it from the receiving standpoint, I think. But for the most part, it's going to be the tight ends that continue to feast in this offense. And, of course, coming along with that is going to be the pass protection. That's the time that Cam needs in order to make the accurate throws, of course. And this Utah team is going to be able to hold it very well in pass protection against the Aztecs once again, I think. The Aztecs will try to confuse them with a couple of different exotic blitz. Blitz has already mes- mentioned the multiple fronts they're going to play. And I think for that, that will cause maybe a little bit of confusion. Even early, I could see a sack early on just because there's something they do, whether it's they bring two line linebackers through the A-gap or so they bring an extra guy off the edge that's unaccounted for. And then I think Utah will adjust to it and then they won't be able to get that pressure again because their four against Utah's five should not be able to get home. I think it's going to come from a schematic point from San Diego State's coaching staff that's going to give them an edge because Utah does have the talent in the trenches to win that battle. Another fun part of this game I'm curious to see about is San Diego State's corners are very physical. They play the run extremely well. Teams have trouble getting those edge runs kind of going, those stretch outside runs going because of how physical the corners are. And of course, Utah is some of the best blocking wide receivers in the nation. So I think it's going to be a fun matchup to see a guy like Solomon Enos go out there, Devon Bailey as well. And that's one of the things they've had to do for so long in this Utah program is be elite blockers. So it's a great test for them to do it against these Aztec corners who are going to be coming down, hitting hard, they're physical. I'm also curious to see how Utah does utilize not only their that in the stretch run game, but you know, this is a team that loves to use the bubble screens, of course, the jet sweep game. And I think that's something we're going to see them try. And I think the Aztecs are going to trust their corners and Utah is going to trust their receivers to move them around. So it's going to be fun and interesting to see who in the end is going to win that battle. Patrick McMorris is the main guy who leads this team in tackles. He's up to 16 on the year. There's five players on this team who are double figures in tackle, all those guys being either safeties or linebackers for the most part. So, And this is a defensive line as well that on the season for D linemen, only one D lineman has a sack. So that's where I kind of talked about just this team struggled to get home at certain standpoints, and that's something I think was going to play a factor. Because you look at the first week, I mean, Utah should be able to score, right? They gave up 38 points to Arizona in the first week, and they held Idaho State to seven. Yes, but this Utah team is obviously has a better offense than Arizona. I expect them to be more productive in this one end. It's part of the reason I feel like they have the edge here is they just have more talent. But it's going to be interesting to see if the Aztecs try to mix anything up from a schematical standpoint to try to give them the edge in this game. One thing we also want to talk about, of course, is how this Aztecs team is going to try to attack the Utah's defense. But first, I want to tell you guys about Bet Online. Bet Online is your number one source for all your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all the latest football league developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts, including this year's opening week games. Bet Online also is your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, and golf. Guys, football is back in full force. Saturdays and Sunday are loaded with great action. We're going to give you our best big game bets of the week later on in the show, but Make sure you head over to Bet Online and look at some of those NFL as well as the rest of the bets. There's only so many we can cover when it comes to college games. So make sure you guys head over to Bet Online to check it out for yourself. You can head over to the mobile device to learn more about the trends or action, or of course, just go to their website, Bet Online, where the game starts. So looking at this thing now from Utah's defense versus San Diego State's offense. And in this San Diego State team is like Utah in this regard. They want to run the ball. They're a zone team, so they like to run it more, and they do not love to just drop back and pass. This team's worst nightmare is falling behind in this game by double figures and trying to have to drop back. And even if they did, I don't even know if they'd want to drop 
do that. I think they would continue to try to force the run and just see if they can continue to establish it because as a team, it's just not something they do as well. They have two rushers over 100 yards, one of those being their core quarterback, Braxton Burmeister, as well as Jalen Armstead as their leading rusher. And he only has 10 carries for 129 yards. So that kind of shows he's averaging 12.9 yards per carry. And you look at a guy like Jordan Bride as well. He's a guy on seven carries. He has 80 yards rushing. So these backs have kind of feasted against some of that less, lesser competition that we talked about that the Aztecs have played so far this year, but still potent running backs. And this offensive line is much better in at the run blocking phase of the game than they are in the pass protection phase of the game as well. So that's going to be the biggest thing. And yeah, the biggest thing as it is for a lot of teams right now, and most teams, especially in college football and the NFL, I feel like are utilizing the more zone blocking heavy scheme that we see because just teams use so many different multiple fronts and things when you're trying to run, let's say a counter, which we know this Utah team loves to run. It's a very counter is more exact in terms of where guys positions are going to be or down blocking. And if there are extra guys in the hole of your counter of where the play is supposed to be, if it's counter, right, if they're in that right gap basically, or the left gap for the defense, but right gap for the offense, then it's going to be extremely difficult to get a runoff there. Versus if it's zone, it doesn't matter how much, how many guys, how many bodies there are there. You know you're stepping to the right, and you know you are working with your buddy to get it over like that. And you have time because it's just you're stepping and the guy's right in front of you. You're just going forward, so there's no hidden surprises. Whereas if you're doing counter and you pull, someone could come through right away, and then in that split second, the offensive lineman, if it's Keaton Bills or Mocha Fisi, have to make that decision to go and make that hit as well. And that's what the Aztecs, it makes sense to me why they would also employ that zone scheme because of that. It just makes it so much simpler when you just have to worry about who's in front of you. And I do think this is a Utah defensive line that should be mixing up and using multiple fronts, showing linebacker blitzes a lot of the time because this is an Aztecs team that does not do great in pass protection. This offensive line gets confused very easily based on the film that I have seen. And I think they are very vulnerable in a lot of ways, especially off the edge. This is where I think Van Fillinger will get his first sack of the season is this Saturday. I think Junior Tafuna will have a chance to get his as well, but we'll wait and see how that plays out. But I just think this is a really good matchup for this Utah team because I, I trust these guys to stop the run. I know they weren't able to do so against the Gators, but that's one of the 20 best offensive lines in college football, I would still say. And look, the Aztecs just don't have that. So I expect guys like Junior Tafuna to be able to win their matchups one-on-one. -on -one. I think Lander Barton, Karene Reed, Mohamu Diabate, I think all these guys, and we don't even know if Diabate is going to play. I should mention that he has that injury and there's been no updates on his status. We know it's not season ending. But we don't know if we'll see him. So that could mean Andrew Mataafa, Hayden Theory also played very well. All those guys could be getting in on the action and they're going to be the ones trusted to, hey, in those zone blocks, those one-on-one -on -one situations, if a guy like Junior Tafuna is able to take on two blockers, that's going to allow a guy like Fury Mataafa Barton Reed, all those dudes to come in there and clean things up, make plays. And those are the tackles you just simply have to make. We saw Utah make that against Southern Utah. I don't think you, just based on what I saw, I don't think Utah had more than three missed tackles in the Southern Utah game, especially in the first half. I don't even know if they had more than one or two that I can remember. Honestly, I'm struggling to remember any of them. But against the Florida, we know it's a big thing, right? 27 missed tackles. So this is a nice step up for this Utah team in terms of playing better competition and especially as well a team that beat them last year and you know they're ready and motivated i spoke with brain daniels earlier this week and you could tell he had a chip on his shoulder about how last year's game played out when you have 17 starters these guys are going to remember what happened in those situations so this team is motivated they're ready to go and this is a defense that's no different so i do think this utah team especially if they can limit the aztecs to short runs on first and second down because this is an offense that's going to run it a lot on second down regardless of if it's second and 11 if it's second and eight if it's second second and five and short they're definitely going to run it this team loves to run the ball and you're their quarterback as well in burmeister i mean he's a guy he's much more comfortable running i already mentioned how he has over 100 yards rushing on the season. He only has 159 passing yards. So Braxton Burmeister coming over from Virginia Tech, transferring in to be this team's quarterback. And I think so there were some people who thought they would try to take a little bit more of an aerial approach, but that hasn't been the case. Burmeister has been, uh, and this offense in general, have just been a run first team. So on the season, his touchdown interception ratio is two touchdowns to one interception, and he has one rushing touchdown as well. And he's a guy who does not, he does not look very comfortable in the pocket. When he drops back, as soon as he feels pressure, he's trying to get out of the pocket, trying to scramble, trying to get 
a first down. Burmeister is not the kind of guy who's trying to just buy time as long as he can and then wait for his guys to get open down the field. His goal is just to run for the first down as soon as he feels pressure. He's not trying to manipulate the defense. He's just trying to get it done with his legs because that's what he feels most comfortable with. So if this Utah team can get him in third and long, bring some pressure, confusion. I think that could throw him off from the jump. And I think this is a game as well where you, Utah's secondary is might be the biggest mismatch of the game to me versus the Aztecs wide receivers. I just don't think it's a very potent group. And I think this is the best secondary in the Pac-12. So I don't expect San Diego State's guys to be able to get separation on Clark, Clark Phillips, JT Broughton, Zamaya Vaughn, and everyone else in this group, even if RJ Hubert comes down and covers a couple of these guys. I think this is a group that's really going to lock in and impose their will, not allowing any separation, which I think is going to be a great thing for this Utah team because, once again, I just think they're going to suffocate this Aztecs offense who they want to run the ball, and I think they're going to find it very challenging to do that as well. So I think if they really get them in those third and long situations, as I talked about, get them on to those sec, get them in those second and longs as well. Just make sure, however you can, make this team have to throw the ball to try to, because that's not only how you're going to create turnovers with sacks, possibly interceptions as well, strip sacks. There's all kinds of things that come from that. I just really feel confident in this Utah defense going into this game. I know this is the unit that, in general, has been obviously they did, they struggled against Florida, but I think they're going to have an outstanding game here. And I think this is a Utah team as well that, because of that chip on their shoulder that I still mentioned, is motivated to go out there and prove to people that they do belong in the top 10 conversation. And I think, look, the media has them ranked at 13, right? But I don't think they really care about what the rankings say. They just want to go out there and continue to prove they're the best team they can be. And I do believe this Utah team's goal, none, none of the players said this, but I think their goal is to once again have it where the twos are in come the fourth quarter. And they can absolutely do that. We know this Utah team's a lot better than Arizona. And Arizona beat this Aztecs team by 18. This is not the same team from a year ago. They lost the defensive player of the Mountain West Conference, as well as they have a couple other turnovers on this roster too. Lost some guys on defense, lost some guys on offense. There's only two returning starters to this offensive line. Part of the reason they've struggled a little bit versus Arizona. And this is, I think this is the Utah offensive line that could have another confidence boost against them because of those one-on-ones they win and the pressure they're able to apply. So it's another side of the ball that I feel like the youths have the advantage in. And yeah, I, I think I mentioned it yesterday on the show. I did my score prediction. I believe it was something like 45 or 42 to 13. And I still feel confident in that because of the experience on Utah and the biggest difference. There's two big differences between this game and last year's game, right? Number one, Cam Rising being the guy going into it. Cam wasn't the guy. It started out with Charlie Brewer still. And then when Cam came in, he took over. And it's part of that reason that I just feel like this is the game where Cam's going to put it all together and have that awesome performance because I do think he's going to play at least three quarters in this one. So I expect him to have more than those three passing touchdowns he had a week ago. And I do think he's going to get in that four to five range as well as he's going to continue to be effective and use his legs when he needs to in those critical situations. And of course, the other big difference from last year's game, Utah's home, the must Ute nation, Rice Eccles stadium, rocking an eight o'clock night game. They're going to be bringing the energy still. I know it's a little late here, but you guys know what it's like in Rice Eccles on those night games as well. It's the people are going to be fired up and ready to go. And it's going to be an awesome atmosphere. I'm sure they've sold it out for the umpteenth hundred time, whatever the number is in general, but I'm excited for this game. And I think the Utes are going to roll in this one and get a big win in terms of margin of victory. Because I think at the end of the season, when you look at it, I think beating the San Diego state team, isn't going to be look great on their resume, but I think it's just going to be a nice win to say, all right, we're two and one moving into Pac-12 play. That's a winning record. That's better than we were a season ago. We feel like we know what our identity is and we're ready to roll now. So I'm excited for this Utah team, the opportunity they have on Saturday. And I really think they're going to get after it because pretty much at every position on the field, they have the advantage. And once again, just the difference between this game and last year, you have Cam, you have guys with more experience, you're better. You also have a Utah team that's not resting on their morals, I think, or I shouldn't say that because they did lose the BYU game before the San Diego State game, of course. So it's a Utah team that lost last year to San Diego State. So they are by no means taking this team for granted. They're coming in locked in, prepared, and ready to go because they still have that bad taste in their mouth from the Florida game and going back to all the way a year ago when they last met in San Diego State territory. So should be a fun one on Saturday. Hope to see a ton of you guys out there as well. Rice Eccles, one of the best venues in college football, was reminded of that last week for the Southern Utah game. And it's going to be another fun one coming up this Saturday, less than 24 hours away from game day, a little more than that from kickoff, but will be a fun one for sure. You know what else is also going to be fun? 
the slate of college football games once again this week. There is tons of great action. So that means it's time for our bet online big game bets. Going through five of the biggest games of the week and giving you guys the lines, how I feel the odds are going to shape out. And once again, this is brought to you by Bet Online. Make sure you guys head over to Bet Online to check out the rest of this week's slate of games as well, if you're curious for how it's going to turn out. So for the first one, Oklahoma is minus 14 and a half at Nebraska. And yeah, guys, I, I mean, I really like Oklahoma in this one. I mean, you just look at Nebraska, had to fire Scott Frost, and it just hasn't gone to plan for them. And this is a Sooners team. Dylan Gabriel has been on fire this season, 36 for 51, 529 yards and five touchdowns as well. This OU team has been strong all season. And I, I just expect this defense under Brett Venables to really be able to get it done. Oklahoma's 2-0, of course. Cornhuskers won and two because they did have that early season loss to Northwestern as well. And I just don't think this is the opportunity for Northwestern to get back on track with a win. I think Oklahoma is going to come in there. They're going to be ready to go fired up. And I think Coach Venables is going to get another nice win to start off. And he'll be 3-0 and after this one. So, yeah, I do like Oklahoma to cover in this one. Then we get Penn State minus three at Auburn. And this is another one where I feel good about the higher ranked team. Penn State one of the top ranked teams. I believe they're actually 22 right now. And Auburn's 2-0 as well, but Auburn hasn't played anyone. Penn State has at least played a really good Purdue team, as I blanked out on their name for a second. But I think Purdue's the kind of team. And Purdue can beat pretty much anyone in the Big Ten that their name doesn't start with OH. And outside of that, Purdue could beat them. And so a Nittany Lions team that has Sean Clifford in there as well. They're averaging 489 total yards per game. We know their passing attack is deadly. That's 323 per game. And even though the defense has just been okay this season, I just don't trust Auburn's quarterbacks to get it done. I think you look at a guy like TJ Finley, and he's thrown three interceptions already on the season. And this is will be by far the best defense in secondary he's played. So, yeah, even though it's, this is a hostile environment that the Nittany Lions have to go into to play the Tigers – I still like the Lions to come out on top in this one, as they probably would in a fight between the animals in the jungle. So we'll go with the Nittany Lions in this one to cover. Then going on to BYU at Oregon. What a game for BYU last week against Baylor. I mean, an incredible finish in that one. And this figures to be another fun one. You get BYU as the 12th ranked team now versus the Oregon Ducks who are the 25th. They jump back in the rankings after a win versus Eastern Washington. We all know what happened to them in week one versus Georgia, but BYU starting off the season with that huge win over Baylor, such a big thing for them last week, and of course had a win in week one as well. As they also went down to Florida and took care of business. So this is going to be a fun one. This is definitely a tough one to pick. I could see it going either way, but I think Oregon's, I mean, Oregon's minus four. I like, I think Oregon's going to cover in this one. I think this is a Ducks team with Bo Nix, Dan Lanning is second home game here and an opportunity to get the first marquee win of his tenure. And I think he's going to be able to do it. I mean, this is a Ducks team as well. That's averaging 458 yards of offense. Now, granted, Jaron Hall and BYU, they're averaging 469 as well. But at the end of the day, one is home and one is not to me. And I do feel like that's going to make a difference. It's so hard as well after you have a big emotional win to come back down, I think, and go on and play in what's also going to be one of the toughest and arguably the toughest environment in the Pac-12. Obviously, I'm going to give that edge to Utah, but Oregon is an incredibly tough place to play up there in Eugene. Dotson Stadium is an awesome atmosphere, and this is a Ducks team I just mentioned. I think Bo Nix has one of those days. I think this defense comes together under Dan Lanning. They'll have a good game plan ready to go for Jaron Hall, and I do think it's going to be close, but as I mentioned, I am taking Oregon to cover this one, and should be another fun one for BYU, but I still can't pick them to get it done here. So I, like I mentioned, I'm going to stick with Oregon. Then move on from one ranked matchup to another. So we get 13th ranked Miami at number 24 ranked Texas A&M. And look, Texas A&M has kind of been in the dumps this week. That loss to Appalachian State, a very dark time in the program there. But they still stayed ranked. And that's an Appalachian State team as well that also almost came back for an incredible win over North Carolina. So that's a feisty team, even if the – I don't know if you guys saw the stat or not. Um, Appalachian State has one four- or five-star player, and Texas A&M has 45 of them. So just to shows you what culture and coaching can do. And it's one of the things that's allowed Utah to be so great for so long because 
you look at some of those 2019 teams, even some of those, the team from last year, there were still, there were really good recruits coming into the program, but they weren't the level they are now. There's a couple guys like the Clark Phillips back then who were obviously huge contributors to the team, but it's so much about recruiting the right guys because it is so hard to rank and predict who's going to be the great players at the next level of guys. So that's what it really matters to take those high character guys in. And speaking of recruiting, I think it's something Mario Cristobal does incredibly well. It's 2-0 with the Hurricanes, gotten off to a good start, but they haven't really played anyone yet. And this is an opportunity for AM to get back on the right track. And I do think this is one where AM is going to be able to do it. So I am taking AM with the minus six. I would like AM to cover in this one. And I just think when you look at AM, I know there's a little bit of a mystery with quarterback there right now. But I think this is, first of all, it's going to be a low scoring game, I think, a defensive battle. But in the end, I'm rolling with the home team to get it out. I just, in games like this that are close, it's so big to be home. You guys know from how about the Florida game? How different would that have been if it was in Rice Eccles Stadium? And we're going to find out next season. But I really like the Aggies. I think that it's going to be a fun, hard-fought game. Tyler Van Dyke is a really good quarterback for Miami, but I think in this atmosphere he might make a mistake or two as well as, I mean, once again, I could just see this game be incredibly low scoring because of how much respect I have for each of these defenses, a and with their secondary, the Hurricanes with their front seven. Both teams have some talent on offense, but in the end, be a defensive grudge match where the home team is able to get it out. Now, our last big game of the day we got to talk about is, of course, the biggest one for all Utah fans, San Diego State at Utah with Utah minus 21. And, yeah, I'm rolling with the Utes to cover. I mean, talked about the reasons all week, right? Utah has a more talented roster. They're better coached. They're at home. They're fired up after last year's loss as well. So they're by no means overlooking this opponent. I think this team is absolutely ready to go. They're ready to roll. They're fired up going into it. And I expect Utah to cover. It's as simple as that. So make sure you guys head over to Bet Online. Those are our big game bets of the week. Head over to Bet Online to capitalize on those today. Guys, thank you so much once again for another fantastic week on Locked On Utes. Appreciate you guys helping us to reach over 400 subscribers earlier in the week. We'd love to keep growing that. If we could get to 500 by the USC game, that would be fantastic. So appreciate all you guys for their continued support. Tuning in each week. If you guys have questions or topics you want to hear covered on the show, make sure you hit us up at Locked On Utes on Twitter. Go send us a message. Send me a personal message at JT Wister If you're watching on YouTube, you see the app. If you're just listening to the podcast, you just heard me say it. So go over, hit me up, reach out to me, tell me what you do and don't like about the show. I would love to hear about it. And we always appreciate you making us your first listen every day. But if you are in the market for a second listen every day, we recommend you check on the Locked On Pac-12 podcast, where host Spencer McLaughlin and other local experts will take you around the conference in under 30 minutes. Lots of fun game previews. And if you guys decide to, after you get done with this podcast and you listen to Locked On Pac-12 immediately after, you'll get double JT on the day. So I would appreciate you guys hopping over and supporting Spencer as well. And we go over some other fun bets in that one as well. So make sure you guys check that one out. And once again, we appreciate you checking this one out. We'll be back next week with full breakdown of everything that happened in the San Diego State game as well as gearing up for Pac-12 play as we are really getting into the season now. It is so great as we're getting closer and closer to some of the biggest games of the season. It was so fun to have that Florida game, and now we're coming up on more of those Pac-12 games that are going to be fantastic to watch. But once again, this weekend, focus on the task at hand. It's San Diego State on Saturday. So you guys have an amazing weekend, and thank you once again for checking out Locked On Utes. We'll see you next week.